quickly a couple of announcements at the end of today's mass since this is our our nation is celebrating mother's day this weekend we have a very special blessing for all of our mothers uh, those who are here present and those uh, that are joining us from afar through the miracle of the internet so we're happy to give that blessing and praise god and thank god for our mothers also you'll notice in the bulletin uh, there is an insert and you'll see it says the holy spirit it's the novena to the holy spirit and it begins this friday and it goes for nine days it covers those nine days in between the ascension of the lord and when he uh when the pentecost when the holy spirit came upon the apostles as a reminder in our area of the country uh the ascension is actually transferred to sunday but the novena still begins on friday in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen we heard jesus say to us just now it was not you who chose me it was i who chose you so much of spirituality in our day revolves around our personal choice the choice of the individual i choose to believe this i choose not to believe that it's a spirituality often centered around the self the ego it's centered around me and what i want from god or what i am prepared to believe about god or not believe about god think about it not just christianity but all spiritualities in our culture seem to be about our quest for something we seek we ask questions we find answers now don't get me wrong there is a personal choice component in following god in seeking god absolutely we do have to make an act of the will a choice ultimately we do have to choose to put our feet on the paths of god but jesus is saying something radical here it's a matter of perspective our personal preferences our choice choices pertaining to god are relatively insignificant here is what matters that god has sought us out that god has chosen us first that god has gone in fact to the ends of the earth to find us and to invite us into our relationship with him it's not so much you who have chosen me it is i who have chosen you getting the priority of choice correct will help us finally grasp so much of what our catholic christian faith is all about this priority of god first you are god's choice that's why you're here and that's very comforting think about how this changes a person's priorities i'm no longer going to pour over how i'm going to reach god instead i'm going to cultivate an attitude of surrender i'm going to allow myself more and more to be found by god what does this mean for our lives as disciples well first being chosen by christ means that you will be sent on a mission <laughs> now the second half of the quote that i started out with in the gospel is and i have appointed you to go and bear fruit fruit that will last so certainly he's chosen us and he has appointed us to go and bear fruit to accomplish something christian spirituality is always always without exception mission oriented it is oriented to a task that we have been given for which we have been chosen 
Think about it. Abraham and Moses and Sarah and David, Daniel, Judith, the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Peter and all of the apostles. Everyone received a mission when they were chosen. We don't really know ourselves truly until we know what it is that God has chosen us to do. I have mentioned many times before that the word for mass, what we're in right now, comes from the dismissal at the end. And the deacon literally sends us out. The word mission has the same root as well. It's all related. We are chosen and sent out with a purpose. We have a mission. The mission is not to sit on the couch and let other people go do it. The mission is something God has chosen for you. So, your question then, for your week, what is your purpose? What is your purpose? What is your mission? And that's something you and God will have to work out. However, there's a clue. Your mission will always be an expression of love. Because love is what God is. From that second reading, God is love. Incredibly short sentence. God is love. Love is not simply one of God's attributes. He doesn't just have love. He, it is his essence. It is who he is. It is what he is. God is love. And it is always a self-sacrificing love. Never a self-seeking love. Think of the love of God the Son, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for you. It is the same image in the Most Holy Eucharist today. In every Mass, God gives himself to us and for our forgiveness, our salvation, and he gives himself totally and completely. That's what we mean by body, blood, soul, and divinity. He's giving you everything. He's not holding anything back. He can't possibly give you more than he is giving you to nourish you for your purpose, for your mission. We have been chosen by love for the sake of bearing love. Now remember, love is not some warm, fuzzy feeling. Love is not an emotion or sentiment, though it is often confused with emotions and sentiments. Love is willing the good of the other. Willing the good of the other. No matter how we might feel about it. To do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. It is not concerned about the self. Do you really want the kind of love that will satisfy your deepest longing for peace, acceptance, and fulfillment? Who doesn't want those things? Who doesn't want peace, acceptance, and fulfillment? Who doesn't want to satisfy those longings? But we, we often shy away from real authentic love real love anyway, because it is always, without exception, involving a sacrifice. No one has greater love than this, Jesus says, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Lay down your life and you will find it. Lay down your life for your wife, your husband, for your mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> For your dad, your sister, your brother, your children, your friends, or even for a stranger. Lay down your life and you will find it. Finally, God's choice for us makes us joyful. The word means full of joy. Don't you want to be full of joy? It's sad that so many people associate our faith with burdens and rules and joyless obligations. If that's the way you feel, then that's a sign that you're not doing it right at all. The whole purpose of our faith is to make us happy, to satisfy all those things, the longings, which is a longing for God, and to make us happy, yes, happy, joyful. 
And we are happy in the measure that we become God's friends. We are happy in the measure that we know his heart and open our hearts to love him. In the measure that we find our mission, our purpose for which he has created us, has chosen us. In the measure that we allow ourselves to be chosen. In the measure that we allow ourselves to be found by his love. In the name of